On this episode of Ask Dan Windows, we're going to talk about Snapdragon 845 and Windows 10 on ARM. When can we expect them? And should you install Windows 10 S on your laptop? Stay tuned. Does it make sense for a non-pro user to install Windows 10 S on an older laptop instead of regular versions? So it's almost been a year since Microsoft has announced Windows 10 S, and there's still a lot of confusion out there about what it is and whether or not people should get it. I would say, short answer here, no, you don't need to actually upgrade to Windows 10 S or put it on your laptop or PC, not to mention the fact it's actually kind of difficult to do. Microsoft is not exactly making this as an upgrade or side grade for users. Instead, it's coming pre-installed on certain devices. Now, the real question here is here, why would you want to put Windows 10 S on a laptop or a desktop if you have one? Uh, and the reason is a lot of people have this idea that it's performant, it's a little bit better for battery life and all that kind of stuff, but it only depends if you install executable files on your Windows 10 Pro machine. So if you never install executables and instead stick to the Microsoft Store for all your applications, well, congratulations, you basically have Windows 10 S. That's all that this is at this point, is a limitation on where you install applications, and there'll be no performance differences between the two. Windows 10 S is not in any sense lighter than Windows 10 Pro. Pro. It just has restrictions on it. Now, a lighter version of Windows 10 is coming. That's what was called Windows 10 Polaris, also part of Windows Core OS. Go check out my other video where I explain about what that is. And that's not going to be an upgrade either. Instead, that'll be with newer devices coming out in 2019. But that is a true thin client solution for Windows 10. And I think a lot of you are looking for, but you have to wait a little bit longer for that to happen. When can we expect Snapdragon 845 based Windows 10 always connected PCs? So if you haven't heard, Windows 10 on ARM has finally launched. Kinda, sorta, maybe, I don't know. The reason I say that is if you've noticed we have not reviewed the HP NVX2, which I'm super excited to get my hands on because HP has not sent one out yet. In fact, HP has done a very soft launch for this. Even if I want to order one, which I would have done by now for you guys, uh, you can't. You go to the website, it's not in stock. Why is this, including Asus's laptop? I think they're doing a very soft launch here. They're trickling it out to markets and various reviewers, but they're not doing a massive push. Part of the reason I think because of that is that these run Snapdragon 835s from Qualcomm. Now, that's a great processor, but if you're up to date on smartphones, you probably know that Snapdragon 845 is the new thing in town. So why would you go spend $1,000 on a PC for what is essentially last year's processor? And that's a super good point, and we will get Snapdragon 845 Windows 10 PCs, hopefully in the coming months. Now what's actually going on here is Qualcomm and Microsoft are working together on this project. The 835 though, as a chip, was already in late development by the time Windows 10 on ARM was happening. Snapdragon 845 though, it's a little bit different. They're working more closely together to make that a really optimal chip for Windows 10. So because of that, things are taking a little bit longer. Don't forget, this is a brand new platform. There's a lot of kinks to work out, a lot of feedback that you want to get. For instance, there's the whole ARM64 issue, which is being ameliorated right now by Microsoft. We'll hear more about that at Build in the coming weeks. So there's a lot of stuff here that needs to be improved before this really gets into a massive push. I expect to see Windows 10 on ARM for Snapdragon 845 devices, though, by the end of the year at the latest. We'll hear more about this probably, though, at Build and over the summertime. With Windows 10 on ARM, is there any hope for small form factor PCs to take notes on or read some comics? So speaking of Windows 10 on ARM, there's a ton of potential for this platform, and I can tell already a lot of you see that. So the question is, when are we going to get some small form factor things? Now, obviously Project Andromeda is sort of going to be that lead device. It's a foldable device that fits in your pocket. It's going to be like a notebook. It's going to be a Surface. It's going to be kind of a very different thing that we haven't seen before. So that's one instance, and for reading comics and books, I think will be actually a really good solution. But that device, as I said before, it's not meant to be a one-off. It's meant to sort of lead, that is, OEMs and Microsoft's partners are meant to create similar devices on this new platform. And that's gonna be really exciting, but we have to wait a little while. It's gonna be at least six to 12 months before I think we hear a lot more about this stuff coming out. 
Having said that, any manufacturer, of course, can make smaller devices. So for instance, eight inch or 10 inch devices that are basically just tablets with an attachable keyboard. I myself would love to see something like an iPad mini just running Windows 10 on there. And that's now possible with Windows 10 on ARM. But until we get Snapdragon 845 support and more drivers and this ARM 64 stuff worked out, it's gonna be a slow burner. They're gonna work their way up to this market, but it won't happen overnight. So let's take a look to see what Microsoft does over the next six months with Project Andromeda, and then we'll go into 2019, and we should start to see more manufacturers adopt new designs, new form factors, and hopefully this will address your concern. I myself am very excited about seeing small form factor devices that hopefully I can fit into my pocket, take around with me, yet still get all the benefits of Windows 10. The promise is there. Let's see if Microsoft can deliver. So that does it for this episode. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or go to our forums at Windows Central. You can ask me a question there. You can also send me an email at AskDan at WindowsCentral.com. Definitely submit those questions. I get a lot of people really want answers to stuff, but you gotta submit the questions and I'll definitely take a look at them. Now, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.